What's up people, it's DevSage here and this is the third video in my JavaScript data structure series. In this video, we'll be going over stacks. What is a stack? A stack is a linear collection of elements, kind of like the ones we've already seen, but a stack has certain properties and rules that it must follow. So I want you to imagine a stack of books. Whenever you want to add a new book to the stack, you have to add it to the top of the stack. Likewise, when you want to remove a book, you have to take it from the top of the stack as well. And that's it. That, that's how a stack works in programming. Stacks are known as last in, first out, or LIFO data structures. One real world application of a stack might be a text editor's undo redo feature so every time you do something like type a letter that action gets pushed to an undo stack so your most recent change is always going to be at the top of that undo stack whenever you want to undo that change you just remove the item at the top of that undo stack now you just undid your most recent change, right? And now you can actually take that same action and put it onto a redo stack. So whenever you want to redo something, you just pop it off of the redo stack. I hope that makes sense. So that's just a little bit about how stacks might work in the real world. So some common stack operations include pushing, which adds elements to the top of the stack, pop, which removes elements from the top of the stack, and peak, which allows you to look at what element is currently sitting at the top of the stack without removing it. So let's jump into the code. So how do we represent our stack? Well, one way we can do it is by writing our own stack class, kind of like how we did with the linked list. So let's do that. So let's say class stack, and let's write our constructor. And the good thing about stacks is they can be represented as arrays under the hood. So let's do that. Let's use an array to kind of represent our stack here inside of our constructor. So let's say uh, this.items equals nifty array. So this array is just going to act as our stack underneath the hood inside of our stack class. And whatever operations we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be performing those operations on this array. So what are those operations again? Well, we need push push is one of the operations. We need to be able to add items to the top of the stack. So one thing I wanna go over though is, so let's say we have these values right here, one, two, three, and four. One is going to be the bottom of our stack, whereas four is going to be our most recently added item, and it's gonna represent the top of our stack. So the beginning of our array represents the bottom of our stack, whereas the end of the array represents the top of the stack. And this is where we're gonna pop values from. And we're actually gonna push and pop values from the top of our stack. So just keep that in mind. So let's delete these and let's get to writing our push method. So let's say push, push is gonna take in a value that we wanna push and let's just say this dot items dot push and let's pass in value. So yeah, remember that push method from arrays that we went over earlier? Well, we can just apply that here. We're saying this dot items dot push. So we're manipulating our, <laughs> our imaginary stack here that we're using as an array. So that's easy. Now let's work on pop. So let's say pop, which is going to 
remove a value from the top of the stack or the end of the array. So let's, uh, we need to perform a check here first before we do anything. We need to check to see if our stack is empty because, I mean, we, we can't pop values from an empty stack. So let's say if this.items.length equals zero, then we return, I don't know, let's return null. Um, if that fails, then we have at least one item on the stack. So we need to say return this.items.pop. It's as simple as that. Remember, arrays also have the pop method here. So what this is doing, it's going to return the last element in that array, and it's going to remove it as well. Um, and that's exactly the properties of the stack that we're looking for. So we can kind of just take advantage of that. So that's why it's useful to represent a stack underneath the hood as just a simple array. And we can just write our stack operations and use the array methods to do the work for us. All right, so we also need peak, which is going to take a look at the top of the stack or the end of the array, and it's going to tell us what that value is without actually changing the stack or removing anything. So let's do that. So let's say peak, and let's say return this.items at this.items.length minus one. So this is just going to return the last element of the array, or it's going to return the top of the stack. Um, yeah, so those are pretty much the main stack methods. Now, we also need a way to uh, basically print the contents of the stack to kind of see how it looks on the inside. So we do need a print method. So let's say uh, print and we're going to loop through all the elements in this array from the end of the array to the beginning and we're going to print those values in that order so we can kind of see how the stack actually looks so let's say for let i equals this dot items dot length minus one we're starting from the last index in the array i greater than or equal to zero i minus minus and now we're just going to console log this dot items at index i all right so yeah i think we uh we have everything we need for our our stack here so let's go down underneath it and let's create our our uh, stack instance so let's say const stack equals new stack and let's push some values to the stack so let's say stack dot push um, seven and let's push uh, one and three so what's going on is let's start here on line 31 stack dot push seven so seven gets pushed to the stack then we push one which is going to push it on top of seven. So one is now at the top of the stack. And now we push three. So three is gonna be at the top of the stack. So when we call print, when we call stack.print, this is what should be printed out. Three, one, and seven. So let's see if that's, uh, if that's how it works. So let's call stack.print and let's run it three one seven this is our stack cool so let's try to pop a value off of the stack so if I call stack dot pop once what's gonna happen is it should pull three from the top of the stack oops sorry it should pull three from the top of the stack. So one and seven should be left. We got one and seven. So three got popped off of the stack. That's exactly what we're looking for. So now let's try popping another value. So let's say stack dot pop. And now we should just be left with seven. There it is. 
we've popped one from the top of the stack now we're just left with seven so let's try to push another value now that we've popped these two let's try to push something else so let's say uh, let's push 100 so now 100 should be at the top of the stack and seven should be under it yeah and that's exactly what we're seeing here um, yeah so push works pop works um, let's try let's let's test out peak so let's say we want it to peak what's the value at the top of the stack so let's say console log stack dot peak and let's comment this print out and let's run this oops I didn't call it so let's try that again we got 100 100 is at the top of the stack and it should still be there so if I call stack dot print underneath it and I ran this again this is coming from the stack dot peak and this is coming from stack.print. So we didn't remove 100 when we peeked at it. And that's exactly what we want. And that's a little bit about stacks in JavaScript. Uh, neat little data structure, not too complicated, but they can be very useful. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you wanna see more content and to stay updated with my future videos. Uh, be on the lookout for the next video in this series coming out next week. Uh, join me on Discord. I have a Discord now, so if you want to come by and chat, uh, the link is going to be in the description. But other than that, peace.